Friends, we are here today to give thanks and to honour the life of Eric Willem, William Barnes and to reverently farewell him and to comfort each other. We are also here to, sh to share the sorrow of those who mourn to Dulcie, Eric's wife, and to the family, Alan, Jeanette, Glennis and Karen and their partners. The grandchildren, Drew, Lisa, Ricky, Mel, Samantha, Mitchell, Dylan and Jordan and their partners, and to Eric and Dulcie's great-grandchildren, Sam, Tom and Finn. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Margaret Cobbledick and I am a lay leader from the Nathalie Uniting Church. And it was there that I came to know Dulcie and Eric. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of our lives, we come together with a sense of common loss. Draw us closer together in faith and love. We pray for all of Eric's family, especially Dulcie. May their present sorrow be so transformed by hope that they will come in time to cherish with true thankfulness those experiences which nothing can take away. Father, as we come to this time of farewell, part of our grief may be regret for things done or not done, words said or never said, or moments that never happened. And so at this time, let us lay aside all those regrets and honour Eric, who would never want them carried into our future. Help us, O oh God, as we face the mystery of death, to believe in the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins and the res resurrection of life everlasting through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, um, I think the hymn words are in here, aren't they? Yes. So would you all stand and sing together, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
like to invite St Sam and Drew to come forward to present the eulogy and you were going to come forward at this time too are you or you'll come up no. All right. um, and I'm sure as you listened each of you will remember times that you have shared with Eric and it's good to be able to share that. We are here today to celebrate the life of Eric William Barnes. Eric was a dedicated family man and a true Katamatite local. He will be greatly missed by his wife, Dulcie, four children, Alan, Jeanette, Glenis and Karen, eight grandchildren, Drew, Lisa, Rick, Mal, Sam, Mitch, Dylan and Jordan, and three great-grandchildren, Sam, Tom and Finn. Unfortunately, Jeanette can't be here today because of COVID restrictions in Perth, Ricky is in Canada with his girlfriend and unfortunately Dylan and Jordan are also apologies due to COVID. Eric will be remembered as a loving family man, a hard-working farmer and a community member who was always around and willing to help when you needed him. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Sam and this is Drew and we are Eric's grandchildren and we will be reading Grandad's eulogy today. On behalf of Drew and myself, our grandma got Dulcie and our family, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Eric was born in Cobram on the 1st of March, 1923. He was the eldest child of Stanley and Pearl and grew up in, on the family farm on Chapel Road alongside his siblings, Hazel and Ron. It is remembered that Eric would ride his horse, Frankie, to school in Katamatite, which was three miles away. From all accounts, Frankie could get a little cranky at times and buck Eric off on the way. However, as we know, Eric was resilient and he picked himself up and kept going on his way. He survived the experiences and finished schooling in Katamatite in grade eight. Eric has always loved his sport and in his early years, he played football and cricket. He played in the back line in football and loved playing for Katamatite into adulthood. Dulcie met Eric's sister Hazel on the ship when she travelled from New Zealand through the Panama Canal with the journey ending in England. Hazel was travelling with Mr and Mrs Charlie Woods. Dulcie and Hazel kept in touch by writing letters and on Dulcie's final leg home to New Zealand, she called into the port of Melbourne. Dulcie used her Australian contact, Hazel, to spend a couple of weeks in Australia. She stayed two weeks with Auntie Hazel and met Auntie Hazel's family, including, of course, her brother, Eric. Eric first went over to New Zealand to visit Dulcie and meet her family. During his second trip to New Zealand, Eric took Dulcie's father's car to a place known, as local, lo known to locals as the Mount and overlooking the ocean he proposed. It was a very romantic setting. On Eric's next trip across the ditch, the couple got married and Dulcie then came to, across to Australia to begin life on the farm at Chapel Road. This was the beginning of an amazing partnership which lasted for 63 years. Eric, cher Eric cherished Dulcie and the adventure she took him on throughout their marriage. They really were two peas in a pod. 
Eric and Dulcie wasted no time in starting their family. In six years, they had their much-loved children, Alan, Jeanette, Glenis and Karen. Life on the farm was pretty good in the years that followed. Eric set to work developing the farm, building sheds and shearing sheds. He was a hard worker and if there was a job to be done, he would do it straight away. The neighbouring farmers would make comments about how straight he sowed the seeds of his crops. That was the type of man he was, meticulous about doing things properly. Eric was proud of keeping his farm tidy and organised and he tried to install some of these hard working values into his children. The children remember receiving five cents for each Patterson's Kirch scotch thistle and burr they pulled out of the ground. Eric was a devoted father who would do anything for his family. His children fondly remember him turning the family farm into a mini sports area. The horse paddock became a tennis court and the above ground was put in the above ground pool was put in the front front yard. There was a croquet set on the lawn, table tennis in the shearing shed, and many backyard cricket games were shared using a banana lounge as a wicket as the wickets. Eric always supported his children whenever they needed him. He was happy to host birthday parties in the shed and drive his kids to various sports and hobbies and help them move houses. He could be counted on to take the ute and the cattle crate down to Melbourne to help move the furniture. Eric and Dulcie created many family traditions. Each year the family would go on a beach holiday in the last two weeks of January. The crops had been harvest, harvested for the year so Eric would pack the four kids into the Holden Kingswood and head off, often to Turos Heads. Celebrating Christmas was always a favourite time of the year to reunite, to reunite with the extended Barnes family. Everyone was welcome and when he hosted, Eric always sat proudly at the head of the table. There was also the Easter Sunday tradition of having a barbecue on the Boozy Creek. We would have an Easter hunt, Easter egg hunt and Eric would make a fire barbecue for the family. In 1987, Eric and Dulcie moved into their newly built fa uh, family, newly built house in Katamatite, which was next to the house his mother and father had lived in. The move into town did not stop Eric from his daily trips in his Brumby Subaru to help Alan out on the farm. Um, it was around this time that Eric and Dulcie started travelling around Australia with their camper van. They would often go for six weeks exploring different states and territories. Dulcie even managed to get Eric overseas with the pair enjoying trips to Malaysia and Canada. They also enjoyed visiting their daughters in Perth, Norfolk Island, Broome and Cocos Island. Eric loved going to watch his children and grandchildren play sport. Over the years he watched his grandchildren play at Nathaya, Cobram and Yarrawonga. He loved being involved in the clubs and brought various memberships and merchandise to, to show his support. We loved having Grandad's support. Dulcie convinced Eric to have a go at bowls and he loved it. He then became a regular part of the team. During these years, Eric enjoyed meeting new people and being part of the Baruga club and bowls community. Eric's grandchildren have fond memories of, trying, of him trying to teach us the rules as we practiced down the hallway at the Katamatite house. Eric was an avid Geelong supporter and he loved watching the Cats play. During the AFL season, Eric and Dulcie would go down to Geelong or Melbourne to watch the games with Margaret and Harold Barnes. He loved recording the scores and discussing the, game, the games afterwards. Eric will be remembered as a true gentleman, a man who lived his life according to his beliefs. He was a family man, strong family values, and he, made, and he was proud of all his children and their accomplishments. Eric was a reliable community member who was always around and happy to help with anything that needed to be done. He worked hard and was friendly and kind to everyone he met. Eric, Eric will be greatly missed by those who loved him.
Okay, I get to do the reading today, and the reading is called Miss Me, But Let Me Go. When I come to the end of the road, and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the Master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 states, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. As a farmer, Eric would have known that because to be a farmer, one follows the seasons and works with them. Eric has lived to a ripe old age, so we are bidding farewell to someone so well respected his life on the farm with Dulcie and family, as well as the interests, especially with the children, kept him busy. And it appeared that following football was something that both he and Dulcie enjoyed. And I must say, I barrack for Geelong and I barrack for Nathalia because my grandson plays with Dulcie's grandsons. <laughs> so we have a little connection, Dulcie. And how wonderful that, father, uh, that as a father, Eric set up sporting areas for the children on the farm. And it's also good to read that the bowls became popular. Eric has seen an era to have lived through amazing economic growth, mobile phones, computers, man on the moon, you just think about it, so much has happened in that time. Yep. And what a difference it has made for our families. So Eric's work on earth is done and in Revelations we are told the celebration of heavenly joys tells us that suffering can now be a past and all tears will be wiped away. And I'm sure the saying that St Paul was able to say. I'm sure this fits Eric. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Amen. So let us pray. O oh God, when memory is sad, hold us in your hand. When memory is sweet, Give us grace to say thank you. Watch over Eric, and at the last, may we with him understand and know your love. We pray for each one of us here today, and for those unable to be here. For Eric's many friends here at Katamatite and surrounding districts. And we give thanks for his contribution to the community in various ways. May all who knew Eric draw inspiration from his life, that memory may live on among us. Lord, may you support us with comfort and peace. Lord God, through the resurrection of your Son, you have kindled in our hearts the hope of eternal life. Guard this hope with your grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And would you pray with me the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, would I have the congregation stand, please? Usually I would walk down to the coffin for the commendation, but um, I'll stay here because of the microphones. Elsie doesn't have to stand. No, don't, you don't have to stand. <clears throat> we now commend Eric to the love and mercy of God. O oh God of eternal life, we commend Eric to you. Now that he has passed from this life, may he know the light of your presence. Give us such faith that by day or by night, in all times and in all places, may we without fear entrust those who are dear to us to your never failing love in this life and in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.